Be seated. Why don't you turn with me this morning to the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. The 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. I want to read just a few verses and talk to you just a few moments about an unexpected surprise. An unexpected surprise. Matthew chapter 17, we're going to start with verse 24 and we're going to read to the end of the chapter, which is only just about four verses. When they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes. And when he had come into the house, this is Peter, Jesus anticipated him, or he expected him. And he said, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or is it from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you, had opened, when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. I find this just such a remarkable passage of Scripture. It's recorded here in the Gospel of Matthew. And as, we were, as I was preparing and just for the last few weeks, the Lord just put this on my heart to share with us today while we were having this back-to-school prayer celebration and, and worship service. And I want you to look at this. Is when Jesus and Peter and disciples were coming to Capernaum, there were some people that were there at the temple. And these, these leaders at the temple, they take up a tax or they take up a, a, a custom, a tribute. And they take up money. And this money is required from every Jewish male who's 20 years old and up. They are required to pay this temple tax. This temple tax is used to help service the temple. It's for the evening, the morning sacrifices. And they'll take this money and it, and it helps carry on the temple. And it's, and it's used for that. They were required to do this. Exodus chapter 30 teaches about it. Exodus chapter 30 calls it, it's interesting what this tax is called. It is called a ransom for the soul. They are to give a ransom for the soul. It's also referred to as atonement money. That it was what it was used for. All of the Jewish people from 20 years old and up were required to give it. Why were they required to give it? And why would it be called and considered a ransom for the soul? Well, here's the reason. They all knew that every year on the Day of Atonement, that the high priest would go in to the Holy of Holies and offer up blood as a sacrifice to God. And it was for a cleansing for the people. And the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. He would offer up that blood as a sacrifice. And then he would come back out. And when that offering was accepted from God he would be able to announce and proclaim that all of the people were cleansed and they're free and their sins were forgiven for them and they were what was called covered. That blood covered them. The blood covered them for a whole year. And it was a ransom for the soul. It was atonement money. And they were to give that. The amount that they were required to pay was considered a half shekel of what the temple price was. So whatever the temple price was, that shekel, they, they all had to pay a half shekel. That was the price. Everybody paid the same price. The rich people didn't pay more, and those that were real poor didn't pay less. Everybody had to pay the same price. Can I tell you that in the spiritual realm, Everybody has to pay the same price. We are all sinners. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. We all have to pay the same price. We were all sinners. We we're all standing guilty. We all, ju- we all deserve to be separated from God. We all deserve death to be separated from God. But aren't you thankful that Jesus paid the price? 
that just as he did with his temple tax, Jesus paid the price for everybody. And no matter if we're rich, no matter if we're poor, no matter what nationality, what culture, ethnicity that we are, no matter what gender that we are, that Jesus paid the price and the blood that Jesus shed for us is good and the same for the whole world. The ground is level at Calvary. Amen. Can we give him a praise this morning and thank him that Jesus has paid the price. You know, I love what the Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 10. It states, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he's guilty of all. There's only one perfect being that ever lived in the earth, and that was Jesus Christ. And he paid the price so that we could get forgiveness. And so they asked Peter, said, does your teacher not pay the tax? Does he not have to pay this temple tax? And Peter said, yes. And so when Peter went into the house where Jesus was, Jesus didn't wait for Peter to answer him. Jesus already knew the discussion. Jesus already knew what was taking place. Aren't you thankful today that Jesus already knows the discussion of things? Or maybe it's, oh, me, he knows the discussions. Because he knows what we're even thinking. The Holy Spirit knows what our thoughts are. So sometimes we might have just a terrible, rotten, you know, uh, attitude about things and just think very bad things. And you might say, well, I didn't say it. No, but if you're thinking, the Holy Ghost knows it. And it's in our heart, and it's wrong. It's a wrong motive. So we have to ask the Lord to cleanse us from all of those, those wrong motives. But so Jesus said, he said, what do you think, Simon? He, he said, for, from whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? Do they take them from their sons or from their strangers? In other words, who does the kings require this tax? And he, Peter said, from strangers. In other words, not their children. And then Jesus said then the sons are free. Jesus was speaking this to let Peter know Jesus really wasn't supposed to have to pay this tax. He was exempt from it. Why? Well, number one, this temple was his father's. This temple was God's. The temple was supposed to be about God and worship and coming to God. And the people had made it a business, had made it a transaction. See, if we ever take the focus on, on coming together as believers and we take the focus off of about God and about honoring Jesus, it just becomes a social club and a gathering. And I want to tell you, it's not about a social club. It's not just a gathering where, where we do what we want to do. It's about coming and honoring God. It's about the focus being upon Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so Pete, Jesus was telling Peter, look, my father, it, this temple is about his. And I'm his sons. And sons are not required to pay the tax. I don't have to pay it. But Jesus wasn't making a big deal about it. Secondly, according to Exodus chapter 30, this tax was known as a ransom tax. It was an atonement for your soul. Jesus was God in the flesh who was without sin. He didn't need to be ransomed. Hello. Jesus was perfect. He didn't have any sins. He didn't need to pay this tax. His father owned the temple. He was a son. He was free. He didn't have any sins. He didn't really need to have to pay this tax. It was for people that needed to be ransomed, but yet in his right not to have to do what he, what everybody else was expecting him to do, Jesus demonstrated humility. Now this is what's going to separate us from the world. There are a lot of times that we're right about things. And there are a lot of times in the flesh that, that we want to, to have our way and get our right because it's our, it's our right. Listen, it was Jesus' right not to have to pay that tax. But you know what Jesus said? He said, lest we offend them. 
In other words, unless this leads to a, a controversy, some, uh, a situation that's going to cause and create strife, he could have argued with them and led it something, but Jesus is a peace giver. Seems like I hear Jesus mentioning something about blessed are the peacemakers. So sometimes, even in our own rights, we have to be above the standard and what's expected. Amen? Because that's how Jesus wants us to walk. And so Jesus, even though he did not have to pay this tax, he paid it anyway. In the same way that Jesus did not need to die on the cross, he did not have to die the death that he did. It was for sinners. He was accused of blaspheming God. He did not have to die to pay the penalty for my sins. I don't know about you, but I'm appreciative and thankful this morning that Jesus took my place and died for me. I am thankful for that, aren't you? He took my place and he took your place and he died for us when it should have been us. Just as he did not need to have to pay that tax, he didn't need to die on the cross. But yet he did. Yet he did. He did die for us. He wanted to avoid a needless controversy. He didn't want to make an issue of something and, and set a bad example. So he says, I'll just go ahead and pay it. I mean, what harm was it going to be for him to pay that temple tax? And so verse 27 Jesus gives him a strategic plan. He says, nevertheless, I'm, we're going to pay this tax. Nevertheless, unless we offend them or create strife, he says, Peter, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the sea. I want you to cast in a hook. And I want you to take that fish that comes up first, the first one you catch. And when you've opened its mouth, you're going to find a piece of money in that fish. Man, I ain't never found a piece of money in the fish I call. <laughs> he says, when you, when you open it, the first one you catch, there's going to be a piece of money in that fish. I want you to take that, look at this, and give it to them from me. And Peter, I'm going to pay for you too. <laughs> Not only did Jesus himself die in an humble death when he didn't have to, but he did it for me. He said, I'm going to pay the price for you. I'm going to pay it for you. I'm going to pay it for you. But don't you love Jesus' strategic plan and strategy for Peter? Peter was a professional fisherman. He knew how to catch fish. But he usually used nets. Remember the Bible talking about them casting nets? They usually use nets to catch fish. But Jesus says this time, Peter, an unusual strategy. I want you to go down to the sea. I want you to cast a hook. Don't cast a net. I want you to go and cast a hook. Because nets usually catch many. Peter, you only need one. And when he went down, and the Greek translation of this is you will find a piece of money is the coin and the... Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. He, he knew the answer over there, Samuel. The money that was found in the fish's mouth was ex the exact equivalent for the temple tax for two people. It was a shekel. The Amplified and some of the other translations says, and you'll find a shekel. It was the exact amount for two people. One person was half a shekel, so a shekel was for two people. So when you find that, take that, that piece of money, that shekel, that's what it is, and I want you to go and pay it for me and you. And, it, and it'll all be covered. Can I tell you, today, that everything that we stand in need of, Jesus has got the exact amount. 
He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Make it personal, amen? Say, he's my Jehovah Jireh. Come on, let's say it. He's my Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider, amen? He's my provider. Now, you may say, Pastor, what in the world does this have to do with us going back to school? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> this is the point that I wanted to get to. It's just right here. Many of you are going back to school this year. You've, some of you have already started, and some others will be starting this week. But, but here, here's what the Holy Spirit, he, he put this passage of Scripture on my heart to, to bring to us today. And this is, this is what I want to share with you today. If you're going back to school, or even if you're going to work, many of you say, well, I haven't had a summer break. I work, and we don't take off for summers. <laughs> but if you're going to work, if you're going to school, this is what I want you to do. I want to encourage you to not get in such a rut and a routine about what you do every day and think it's going to be just another day. Can I tell you that every day is not just another day? This was the only time that it records that Peter actually found a coin in a fish's mouth. And he had caught a lot of fishes. But on this time, this day, it was an unexpected surprise. Kids, when you go back to school, don't look at it as just another, another day at school. We're going through the same thing. I got this clan. I got that. You don't know what God might choose to do something amazing in your life. Just ask John Isaac. He might use you to pray for somebody, mightn't he? He might use you for, for something that, that needs to, to transpire. It may be a, a specific strategy. Maybe you've been like Peter and you used to cast the nets. Maybe you're used to walking down the same hall, going the same path every day. But this day, God whispers to you and you just have this unction. And the Holy Spirit says, I don't want you to go down this hall today. I want you to go down this hall this day. I want you to, I don't want you to, to just share, you, know, you young kids, share your toy with your best friend Jimmy or, or James or Sally or Susie. I want you this day to share your toy with somebody else because the night before she had a bad, something bad happened. Maybe she's heartbroken about a situation in her family and she needs to, to feel loved and you can be that to her. Take your hook and cast it into the sea because God may be wanting you just to connect with that one person on that particular day. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God will give us the strategic plan and strategy that we need to help us accomplish what we need every day. You business people, listen to me. If you will listen to the Holy Spirit leads you, He will cause you to prosper. Don't try to rationalize and make, create business ideas and come up with solutions in your own mind. Listen to the Holy Spirit leads you and God will always cause you to rise above and cause you to prosper in your business. Amen? If you will follow the Holy Spirit, it will cause you to prosper. And God will give you favor. God will give you favor. Y'all know I taught school for 10 years at the middle school. And there's one thing that I've got written up in my, in my charts uh, there at the Forsyth County School. Probably still there, but not, I, I don't really know. But one thing that they had a problem with that I've got written up in my file. And that was one year I invited the students to come to church with me. 70 kids showed up on that Sunday morning. We picked them up from the school the public school system, and we hauled them in vans and buses over to our church where we were at, and about 12 of them got saved that Sunday. That, that's what they did. The next year, I did the same thing. The only problem is we had a new principal that year, and she didn't think too highly of it. You know, and it kind of put a bad rap with administrators and me because they thought I was just there trying to 
rock the boat and trying to create havoc and all. But you know, before that I left, it wasn't long for God began to give a favor and I gained a great relationship with my administrators there. And they began to trust me because they knew I wasn't trying. So they began to call on me to help lead things and to do things because you just have to allow God to allow that. And I remember the last year when I sat in, my, in the office with the principal and told her I wasn't coming, coming back. This was in 2004 when I resigned and, um, from, from teaching. And I remember we just sat in there and cried together because it was gonna be the end. And I thank God that he allowed the time that I did. But what I, want to, what I want to tell all of you is God will give you a specific strategy. Amen. You can, now listen to me real good, because the world will have you to think otherwise. It's, it's a trick and a plan of the devil. Listen to me. The demonic spirits will try to hinder you and lie to you and tell you that you can't talk about God and you're not allowed to talk about Jesus and you're not allowed to have your Bible at school. I want to tell you flat out, emphatically, that is an absolute lie. You have all the right to talk about God. You have all the right to talk about Jesus. You can carry your Bible uh, to school. Nobody can keep you from it. And you need to appropriate your authority. The devil just wants you to believe that and try to stifle your growth and try to stifle and nuzzle your mouth where you don't talk about God. But I'm telling you, uh, the church is rising up. There's an army that's rising up. People are finding out the truth. They're knowing they can talk about God. And there's nothing that can stop you uh, from telling others about Jesus and talking about how you can pray for them. And you just got to exercise your right and authority to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, as teachers and administrators, we've got some in here, these teachers. We all know I was a, a minute. You just can't initiate it, and you can't be the one uh, that's doing that. You can be involved, but you just can't say, hey, and, and force it on people. That's what you can't do. Amen. But it's going to be a good year. And we're going to bless you. And we're going to bless you uh, uh, this morning and pray for you. And, uh, but, but I want you to do like Peter this year and expect God to speak and whisper something to you that's going to be a unique strategy. And he might say, I need you to cast that hook. You've been used to nets. Today, use a hook. And when you can, I'm going to have something for you. And you're going to be a blessing. And you're going to be a blessing. Amen. All right. Well, Pastor Jonathan, would you come on up? Pastor Jonathan and Carrie, y'all come on up. They are responsible here uh, for our kids all the way from the nursery, all the way up through fifth grade. <laughs> Wonderful children's pastors. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to let him, I'm going to let them call up the kids and pray for them. And then we'll just go through all the lineup and we'll get to celebrate all the kids. I know some of you homeschool. Some of you are in private schools, Christian schools, some of you in the public school, whatever that it is, it, it doesn't matter. If you're in that grade level or that A, we want you to come up as they share. So uh, praise God. <laughs> yeah. That's hard to follow right there. He just got to preach and then all of a sudden, come on up. I mean, I, don't, I felt like I was going to the principal. Um, uh, we're so thankful to, to, to take part in this, to have opportunity to, to pray for for, for so many children and you know and and as we do this um, each opportunity we get to, to take part in this is such a wonderful thing um, it's a wonderful awesome thing but I, I want to ask you as we pray for them today to continue to pray for them throughout this year um, they're faced with so many things and uh, they need to know every day that they're loved by their father and I'm talking about their heavenly father. They face things that I didn't face. I, you know, I mean, they just, it's just, it's just a different time. But God is still God and he's still on the throne. And, and I just, you know, you may have kids. You may not have kids. Uh, you may want kids. Um, I, we'll give you some of ours if you want them. Um, but I mean, but seriously, I mean, lift them up. I mean, the Bible teaches us to, to pray, for, pray for each other and to, to esteem each other. And so I just, I ask you, I challenge you to do that throughout this course of this year. And, and, and here's the thing, all right? You may not and probably will not see the fruit from that, okay? Um, you may get an opportunity to see some of these kids come up and share their gifts and talents. But I truly believe, and the Bible teaches us, you, you, you pray for them and you water it, and God will give the increase. And so um, that's one of the things that, that we've learned being here at the church. Um, you know, 
um, and just being able to witness this, you just watch them grow and, and you know, and, and just God love on them. And, and that's, that's great. So I just, I want to challenge all of you, okay? And, and this, I mean, it doesn't matter if you've got kids in that age, I mean, you know, and, and just pray for them. I mean, they, they need your prayers. They need your prayers. And, and, um, and uh, so we just, uh, you want to say anything? Okay, all right. Uh, um, just do that if you will. Just, you know, and if you get opportunity and see them, you know, ask them how things are going, you know, and, and um, you know, just, just love on them cause, because they need to be loved on. And, and the world today is, is just, they need that. So um, we're going to do this, and I, we've kind of discussed this, and hopefully we've kind of got this in order. Uh, probably what we'll do is we'll bring up each grade level or each age and kids, if you're out there, okay, um, we want you to come up here and we're going to pray for you. Um, so try to do it quickly, you know, and just listen, all right? So I guess we need to get preschool, uh, preschool kids first, all right? Um, so if you're um, three, four, and, you know, I know we've got some that, I mean, that are not in the nursery, you're welcome to come up here too. Uh, you may, if you can't walk, your parents will have to bring you up here. Um, yeah, but just come on up. You can come on up. Dalton's real shy like his father. Come on, Dakota. Come on. Come on. If you're interested in helping with us, too, um, you'll get to spend some time with these cute, adorable, beautiful, precious children. So, all right. Come on up. All right. Aren't they? Look at them. Yeah. We've got several. Yeah, we've got a few that's not here today. Layla, are you going in preschool? Okay. All right. All right, um, kindergartners, those have just started or um, are going to start this week. Some have already started. Yeah, let's give them a hand, yes. Where, where'd you get those pants at, man? I like those. Zachary. Yes. Come on, David. One of the benefits of working with kids is I get to be taller than them. I don't get that very often, so they don't really know how tall I am. All right, is that all of them? All right, let's give them a hand. Have you started yet, David? Has it been good? Mm -hmm. Good, good answer. Zachary, what about you? Good. Good, good, yes. Good job. All right, first graders. Come on up, first graders. We got any first graders? Tristan. All right. Come on. Is that everybody? Come on up, kids. Another one. Come on up, Jaden. Now, we're going to get all wadded in this little corner right here in a minute, and we're going to be in a mess. All right, all right. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's give them a round, okay? We've got several. Second grade. we got any second graders? Noah. All right. We've we got some that's not here today. Yeah, Nevaeh's in third, yeah. She'll come up in a minute. All right. Is that all the second graders? I know Hunter's not here. and um, So let's give, him a, let's give him a big round of applause. Smile, Noah. He's got to be serious, all right. All right, third graders. Third graders. Oh, my word. Girls? Is there no boys in this group? Woo. All right. No boys out there? You may not want to go with all these girls up here. All right. Let's give them a round of applause. They're precious, smiling, beautiful. Fourth graders. 
fourth graders. Oh, here comes the boys. The Bible teaches us to respect our elders, girls, so just, they're older than you. And one girl, all right, she can handle all them boys, though, I can assure you that. Oh, Layla, I'm sorry, Layla's over here. All right, um, fifth graders, fifth graders. We have some fifth graders. There's a few. Some that's not going to come up. You're welcome to come. We don't want to leave you out. So, these, these kids are precious. So, um, are you all smiling? Has it been good so far? No answer. We can talk about it later. Is that everybody? I mean, is that, I know there's some that, um, that, that may be out there, and that's cool. We're going to pray for you. And um, um, this is a great group of kids. They're smart. Um, they're fearfully and wonderfully made. God has just made them all so special. Um, they're certainly special to us. And um, kids, listen. God's going to use all of you. He already is. He's going to use all of you um, throughout this year. Um, and just we look forward to hearing what God's doing. You're going to share that with us. We can tell your parents and, and um, you know, just tell our church family. And um, they're, just, they're just all so precious. So, um, you know, God's going to use you. And, and here's the deal. We love you, but God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And so... Um, we're right there with you. So we're going to pray for you. And if you need somebody, you know, some of these people, you see some of these friendly faces. I mean, they're some strangers. Now, you, you're not supposed to talk to strangers, all right? Um, but uh, we've, got a, we've got a church family that loves you. So, Carrie, do you want to say something? I just want to say these are amazing kids. They really are amazing kids. And what a blessing for us that we get to just see them grow but we have to let some of them go too, and that's always hard every year. But um, you guys are amazing, and I know the Lord is just going to use you guys and bless your lives always. So we love you. Um, and some of the teachers here that help with the kids, you, you're welcome to come up here if you will. We would like for you to come real quickly to kind of pray for them. You know, people that have helped, uh, that are helping, um, that kind of pour into these kids. Um, you know, it, it, takes, it takes so much love. Um, and you know, there, there's some that's, that's, that's coming, um, some that, um, come on, there's others that are not here. Um, and, um, are you going to call the teachers in just a little bit at a different time? Teachers of the public school and stuff. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll handle that later. All right. Um, well, let's pray for them. Okay. Let's pray for them. Everybody, uh, let's, let's reach forth your hands, um, and just pray a blessing over them. And uh, as we join together, kids, bow your heads, close your eyes, be quiet. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to stand here and in your midst come to you and just thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. And thank you that there's life uh, in, 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 in knowing you. And just thank you for the relationship that we have with you, Father. We just... We just ask you today to be with every child uh, that's represented here today, whether they're standing up here or whether they're in their seats. God, I pray that you would just, I pray that you would bless each and every one of them. God, be with them. Give them the words to say, the things to do. God, let your peace rest upon them and let them know that, you're, that your angels are there. Uh, watching over them, that, that, that they're never, ever alone. And I pray, Lord, that you would just continue just to be with them. And as they grow older, as they, get, uh, as, they, as they grow up, we pray that, God, that you would begin to show them, God, who they are in you. And, and, and just pray that you'd let their identity to come forward and realize, God, that they're a child of a king. And we, just, we, just, we thank you for that promise we thank you for the assurance to know that, God, you're there. We're never alone. And we just pray blessings over them, their teachers. Lord, let them, let them, 
work hard, let them do their best, and God, and just give them the peace, give them the courage, give them exactly what they stand in need of when they face things. God, we just pray that, God, they would remember that they can do all things through Christ, which gives them strength. So we bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you'd be with them, keep them safe. Uh, Satan, you have no weapon formed against them, shall prosper in Jesus' name. We bless them in Jesus' name. We all say Amen. 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 All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Thank you so much. Um, as they're making their way, um, Pastor Todd, if you and um, Tanya will come forth, um, we're just going, I'm going to kind of transition into him and let him share, and I'll pick up after these kids, the usual. Now the kids know how tall Jonathan really is. It's a blessing for me to get to, to work with these youth. Sometimes it's difficult because they've got so many questions sometimes that they feel, they've got questions that sometimes hard for me to answer because they know so much and they, they, they wonder so much. And, and we've got, sixth grade through twelfth grade. And then we've got some some college age that come down there and hang out too. But but these kids are absolutely amazing. They are unreal and, and they have so many gifts. And and I mean you seen from some of the music, uh, you know, the praise and worship when you're downstairs and on Sunday mornings I've got sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And when you see the kids when the praise of worship is going on, you've got some of the kids that have just got their arms outstretched, and, and you've got some that are just trying to figure out what's going on. And then Wednesday nights, we've got 6th through 12th grade downstairs. But it's every service when I leave, I've got so many things that are going over in my mind about how, how blessed I am just to get to be a part of this. I mean, I'm nothing special. I'm just along for the ride these kids the ones that we're about to bring up and I tell them this all the time they are going to change this community they're going to change this country and they're going to change this world I fully believe that there's going to be a change in this age group kids our kids here at freedom they're going to play a part because there's so many so many talents and gifts that these kids have and I lose some this, this year. I, I have some that on Sunday mornings are going to be coming out here with you guys. Good luck, Pastor Robbie. <laughs> I say that as a joke. The, the, these kids really, it's, it's going to be tough. It's, it's difficult when you know that you know, you've got them and then all of a sudden you don't. I came in to start with the, the, the link just a few months ago. Pastor Gary and Emily have laid the foundation for that age group and, and I'm just blessed to get to to pick up the, the pieces now and, and continue putting the puzzle together. You know, each, each kid has their own place. But we're going to call them up. I, I don't, my wife, I'm sure she's got something to say. I can't do all this without her. I can't do it by myself. Uh, she plays a big part in, in working with the girls and, and the different things like that. But I've got some more leaders, and I'm going to do this, dude. I'm going to bring, them, bring the ones that help me up. Uh, if you help with the youth, some of you can. Some of you can't. Joe and Shannon in the back play a huge part with the youth. Uh, Joe's running the, the camera, trying to make me pretty. Is it working? <laughs> Shannon's on the sound. Marcus and Elisa, they work us, with us with the youth. I want to ask them to come up too as we, as we pray for them. Uh, kids, you know I love you. And y'all mean the world to me. And as we bring them up, we're going to bring everybody up at once, and we're going to do one prayer there at the end. So if you're going into the sixth grade, these are some of the kids, because Pastor Todd's kind of big, and he's kind of scary sometimes, and, and he's kind of loud. I knew I'd forget somebody. We didn't, I didn't forget. <laughs> Lindsay makes the whole thing work. And let me just tell you that my wife is, is, is my part. But as far as the service on Wednesday nights, Lindsay's the cog in the wheel. She, she's the one that, that makes it work, and, and that's just the truth. 
when, when it's, you know, it is what it is. Sixth grade, you guys are new to me. So if you're going into sixth grade, come on up here. And I'm not that bad. I'm not that tough. Oh, no. Okay. Some of them are kind of eyeballing me. So this will be their first time in, in Link on Sunday mornings. Uh, and if you guys don't know what Link is, it's just another service like we have up here, downstairs below you. So sometimes when you hear some noise and some loud stuff and things, that's us downstairs just having church. We're not playing, you know, we don't, we don't do all that. If you're ever interested, come down on a Sunday morning. Come spend a few minutes. Come with your, if you want if, if you want to see what your child goes through, or goes to, not goes through. Come downstairs. Yeah, it could be both. <laughs> come downstairs on a Sunday morning and just come sit with them in a service. And, and that way you'll feel comfortable with everything that goes on. Uh, and, the, and then, and then they'll, they'll be okay. They'll all be fine. Seventh grade. If you're going in seventh grade, come, come see me. <laughs> Eighth grade. He's going eighth grade. Oh. Oh, come on, come this way. Okay, this group, this will make up Link, our Link program, uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. They're the ones that will be with me on, on Sunday mornings and then on Wednesdays. So now we go to the freshmen. Ninth grade, y'all come on up. Okay, y'all all like that corner. Come this way. Come on, Keely. Tenth grade. Eleventh <laughs> grade, any juniors? Last but not least, any seniors? So these kids mean a lot to me and, and, and the helpers. But I, want, I just want to say one thing, and this is a challenge to everybody out there. You always hear that saying, the, the youth is the leaders of tomorrow, the church is the future of the church. Somebody lied, okay? Somebody didn't tell you the truth. This is your church of today. Get behind them. Get behind their outings. Get behind their functions. Teach them. Because right now, they're teaching me. They're teaching me. This is, this is the future. For, for Freedom Tabernacle to continue, this is it. This is the next steps into what you guys do. And I'm speaking to us leaders too. These are the ones that are taking our spots. That's, that's as true as it can get. And they, and they need our support. They need our help here. They need our help out of here. They need correcting when mom and dad's not around. Don't they, guys? But I love the kids. I, I, wanted the, I wanted the leaders up here because I want everybody to pray. And the same way, I want everybody to stretch forth your hands for all these kids. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be a part of these kids' lives, Father. Lord, we just thank you for each and every one and for what they stand for. God, for the gifts 
Lord, that you've blessed each and every one of them with and allowing me the opportunity to see those gifts in action. Lord, we just pray for peace over them, Lord, over their families, over their homes. Lord, we just believe, Lord, that you've got a mighty work in store for each and every one. Lord, we ask that you be with our teachers, Lord, be with any of the counselors, administrators, Lord, that are affiliated with these children's lives. Lord, be with the leaders here at the church. Lord, through each and every position, Lord, that, that, that these kids put themselves in, Father, I just pray and I know that they're going to look for you, Lord, to get the answer that they need. Lord, I thank you, God, for the salvation that you've given me, and Lord, for the ones here that I've been able to see accept that. And Lord, I just thank you again for what you're going to do in their lives, what you're going to do in this school year. I believe big things are going to happen for these kids, Lord, for this church, Lord, for these schools and these communities. I believe they're going to be a mouthpiece for you, and they're going to not be afraid to proclaim what Jesus Christ is and what Jesus Christ done for them in their lives. Lord, we just thank you once again for each and every one here, and we ask that you go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Do y'all want to stand in ovation or y'all want to go sit down now? Okay. Thank you, Pastor Todd. And by the looks of this crowd right here, the middle and high school students, we better make sure we've got plenty of hot dogs and hamburgers tonight, don't we? <laughs> got a big crew and all the parents coming, so it'll be a wonderful time. So all you that were just up here, 5 o'clock tonight in the gym, and we'll have a great time. All right, do we have anybody that's going to, going to be in college? Just taking any, maybe you've been out school sometime, you're going to take some college courses, either online or at school. Anybody doing some college? Nobody? Come on. You doing? Come on. Anybody? Anybody? In some college, okay. Come on up. I know some of the ones we got in college are there now. That's where, where they're at. They're, they're not here. So, uh, um, Alan, would you come on up and I want you to pray for, uh, pray for, the, for, the, for the college. I'll stretch your hands for this way. It's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we're praying right now, Lord God, as, as Todd mentioned, Father God, we're praying for the future, Lord God. We're praying, Lord God, that they would... They would go out, Father God, and in this world that we live in, Father God, that you give them strength, Father. That, Lord God, you'd lead, guide, and protect, Father God, in every way, Father God. They go out, Lord God, and make a career, Father God. Is in the college, Lord God, learning, Lord God, what you'd have them to learn, Father God. But most of all, Lord God, we ask you right now to anoint them. And Lord God, give, give them the wisdom of the gospel that they can be a light in a dark place, Father God. And Lord God, you can take them from higher heights to lower lows to higher heights, Father God, with you, Lord, as they put you first in their everyday lives, Lord God. And Lord God, they'd be amazed when they come out of this this year as a freshman in college or a freshman in high school or, Lord God, just starting a new job out freshly out of college, Father God. We pray for them, Lord God, it will be a graduating this year, Father God, out of college. That, Lord God, you direct their path, Lord God. And most of all, Father God, we pray that they keep you first in everything that they do, Lord yeah. God. And, Father God, that they would not be ashamed of the gospel. They would stand up and proclaim the goodness of God, what you have done in them, Father God. And, Lord God, most of all, that they would go back and where the devil has interrupted them and took back and stole from them, Lord God, that you would give back to them, pressed down, running over, that you would bring back the, the things from the kingdom of God to them, that they would get a hold of, Father God, and they would go out, and Lord God, give, give back to you, Father. Yeah. Lord God, as our pastor said this morning, Lord God, it'll, it'll stay the same unless they sow it back to you, and you can multiply it and bring it back sevenfold, Father God. But most of all, Father God, let them share their faith, Lord God, that they, they know a living, a living and risen Savior that died for them on the cross, that shed his blood, that they would be cleansed and made whole and have everlasting life with you, that they would not be ashamed to tell their fellow classmates and the fellow students, Lord God, and the college, the college kids, that, that we know the way. The way is the truth and the light, and he will provide, he will protect you, and he'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. And he'll make you a heavenly place in heaven with him. You just have to believe and proclaim the gospel. The biggest miracle of all is salvation. Yes. And we claim that, that they would go out and, and be a light in a dark place, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Alan. Praise God. 
Not only praying for Jaylene, but others. I know we've got some other college students. Some of them are at their school or on campus. Some of them are out of state and uh, different regions and places. So we want to lift them up. I want to call up anybody that works with the school system. That's whether you're a homeschool teacher, maybe you're a bus driver, a teacher, a custodian, lunchroom worker, anything to do with working in the school. I want you to come up here this morning. I know we've got several that, that are engaged in this. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm glad to know that our children have some believers that are there pouring and speaking and sowing into their lives. And uh, I'm just so appreciative and thankful for you all. Y'all just slide over here in the middle. Let's just kind of kind of join right there. So we just want to lift them up. We're so thankful and appreciative of, of you guys and um, for y'all's time and effort and and I know you pray for your kids, and you're just glad to see them. I know you, have, you love them. That's why you're there, and um, we just appreciate all the work that you do. So let's stretch our hands for Patrick, would you come and pray for them? And so let's just pray a blessing that God would use them, that God would use them this year and uh, wherever they, whatever they do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit in the schools, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that, uh, that you are in control, Lord God. And it's, it's, not, it's not the enemy, Lord God. And, and Father, I just uh, I ask a, a blessing over them every single day that they go to school, Lord God. That they have you, Lord God. They got the Holy Spirit, Lord, leading them and guiding them. Lord, I ask you to protect them when they're in small circles, Lord God, and they're talking to each other. There may be an opportunity that comes up, Lord God, and that you are glorified, Father, and that you are magnified in that. And Lord, as they go forward, Lord God, and they're teaching the kids, Father God, they may not be able to, to say your name, Lord God, but they can invoke your principles, and they can invoke the truth which we know, Lord God, goes forth, Father. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask protection on them, Lord God, every single day and a hedge of protection around the whole school that they're going to. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pat. Thank you all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me this, this morning? We're so thankful. We had a, just a wonderful time in the Lord today. Thank you for your prayers and and um, you got to see all of the people that, uh, all the kids here, and just hopefully the Lord spoke to you today and just some great things happening. So I'm going to dismiss you. I'm going to declare the blessing over you. I want to, remember, to remind you, all the guests, if you would, just to meet right out, go in the sanctuary, turn right to the hospitality room. We got a gift for you today. I want to thank you for being with us. And uh, youth, remember the event tonight, 5 o'clock. And uh, Men's and Women's Fellowship Friday night. And then, of course, we have our service Wednesday night. And I was looking forward to some great things happening. So thank you all so much for being here today. And I hope God just blesses you with a wonderful week. Would you lift your hands? Let me bless you. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You're free to go. If you need prayer of anything this morning, we're here to pray for you.